Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to do something nobody has ever thought to do before. I'm playing Minecraft, and... <laughs> that cow is an idiot. Anyway, I actually play Minecraft fairly often. I've almost completed my house, and so I thought it would be a good idea to do a tour of it. I guess it makes sense to start with the outside. This here is my farm, in which no creepers are allowed. This here is the little shack I started with. It is now Herbert Erpaterp's Dirt Emporium and Snack Bar. Come on down and get yourself a delicious treat. There's not much in here but dirt and cobble, but it was a safe refuge at night when I was building my house. Around the back I have some acacia trees because I needed the orange wood for my stairs and fences. Here are my stables, which contain these happy fellows. Nothing too fancy out here, really. Here's the trapdoor leading to the center of my house. Oh, hello slime. You can see why I call it the Herbert Hole. I figured it would be safest if the Herbert Hole had a cover, so I figured why not put a burning H on top of that, because who doesn't like fire? It's also visible on the map, which is nice. Let's go inside. My entryway used to have art on the walls, but creepers gonna creep. Here is my command center and bedroom. It has all the things one might want in a bedroom, such as a view of a huge orange pit, an anvil, a furnace, a crafting table, and loads of chests filled with all manner of rocks and junk. It also has a bed, which is kind of handy if you like sleeping, I guess. Let's move on and see the rest of the house. As you can see, I have lovely polished granite flooring throughout my house and acacia stairs that kind of match the red sandstone pit walls. Grey brick walls and cobble ceiling complete the look. Now this here might look like a prison for animals, but it most certainly is not and you'll keep your mouth shut. It is clearly an animal storage facility. I have rabbits, bacons, and raw chicken nuggets. Let's see if they've laid any nugget eggs. Lagging through doors is fun! Oh, and that one seems to want his freedom. Five eggs. Let's see if we win a prize. Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 No. Ah. Uh. Now to deal with this rebellious fellow. This is why I have a secondary door. To keep the animals in pris stored. No. You've got nowhere to go except straight to chicken hell. I will use your corpse as a warning to others. <clears throat> anyway. I've got the chicken nuggets, moo cows, and sheeps. All very well kept in their spacious enclosures. Now let us continue our tour and not mention any of this at all to Peter, because they will not be interested and you'll just bore them. The lower levels are this way. This little junction gives us the option of heading towards the ice room and auto smelter, or the enchanting room, portal room, rail station, and archery range. It also has a nice view of the hole. Let's go this way first. Here is the ice room. It might surprise you to learn that this is a room full of ice. No torches, they kept melting the ice, which was a bit of an issue. Fortunately, the light in here isn't too bad anyway. Just a little further down this corridor is the auto smelter. It isn't overly complex. There's a cart to haul stuff up from the mining area. It unloads into the furnace, which then drops the result into this chest. It runs on blocks of coal. It's nothing particularly fancy, but it does have a view of the pit. Heading back the way we came, we can find our way to the enchanting room. It's pretty basic. I've not finished adding all of the bookshelves yet. It's got a chest for lupus, and yet another window to the central pit. Suits my needs just fine. Right next door is the portal room. It's simple, but functional. I have a map on the wall to help visitors get their bearings, a welcoming sign for when I can't personally welcome visitors, and of course, a portal. Let's go through. And now, we're in the nether hub. You can see my portal has a very lovely and manly banner. Here's the portal to Spawn Town. Very pretty, very portally. Oops, I got lost like a numpty. Ah, here it is, let's go back. The map greets us on our way back in and we can continue our tour. I'm such a kind fellow that I've put signs up to aid in navigation around my house. It's a bit of a maze. Here's the rail station. It is of course quicker to take the portal to and from Spawn Town, but I figured why not have a railway too? I do like train rides. It runs entirely underground and joins the subway line at a nearby station. Let's move along and look at the archery range. 
I figured it would be nice to have a place to practice archery, and so I built this room. There isn't a lot of archery stuff here, but that's okay. Visitors can feel free to bring their own stuff. It's about 50 blocks long. The idea, obviously, is to hit the target at the end of the range. Unfortunately, I suck. <laughs> Finally! Such bad shooting. I'll pull the arrows out and use a range more suited to my skill level. Boop. The Herbert Hole has fun activities for all. Moving on. Here's another junction. This one has a shaft through which mobs fall to their doom. To the right we have access to the loot from said falling mobs, a flower prison and lower level access. To the left we have the fire room, cane farm, pool and lower level access. It's kind of a loop. Here is the fire room, another of the Herbert Hole's fun activities. What good house doesn't have a fire room? How else would you destroy your incriminating evidence? And here's the cane farm. Nothing particularly special about it. It doesn't auto harvest, it just grows cane. And here's the pool. Nothing too exciting here either. I don't have any poolside furniture yet, but who needs that when you've got such a view? It has a shallow end and a deep end and the water is just right. All I ask is that anybody that uses the pool refrain from urinating in it. Best to avoid drinking the water anyway. The creepers probably piss in it when nobody's looking. Moving down the stairs, we have a choice of left towards the lower levels or right towards the lava room. Everybody likes lava, right? Who wouldn't want a room filled with lava in their house? Crazy people, that's who. Moving on. This room is kind of a foyer above the mine. Oh, hello slime, hello zombie. You aren't welcome here. Anyway, this is above the mining ring, ground floor and basement, but we won't go down there just yet. Let's continue around the loop. This is not complete yet, but behind the glass is going to be a tree rune. You never know when you'll need to get wood. <laughs> and why not have a supply inside your own home? The trees will be accessible via this staircase. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of digging to do. Let's move along. Heading up these stairs, we find the mob loot collection chamber. This is good for obtaining things like gunpowder. There's a dark chamber near the surface that encourages mobs to fall to their deaths in this room where I can scoop up their stuff. It also has some handy trash burning lava. Hmm, uninvited mobs in my hole. Perhaps I need more light. Oh well, on we go. Here we can see the rails for the minecart that runs between the mining ring and the auto smelter. I thought it would be fun for that to be visible. And here is the flower prison. All of these flowers have committed absolutely horrible crimes and so they've been incarcerated in this room. They have a nice view, which is frankly more than they deserve. Let's get out of here. We just follow this path and loop back around and eventually we end up in the junction again. Now let's head down to the mining ring. Grr, you bastards, get off my lawn! Uh, I mean, granite. As the name implies, the mining ring is a ring from which I will be mining. Pretty simple. It isn't completely finished yet. It has four of these stairways down to the ground floor. Oh, Smeleton. What are you doing here? What a jerk. Absolute jerk. Let's take a look outside. I guess the hole would be more impressively deep had I started atop a mountain or something, but it took me a really long time to dig this out and I died many times. It also took quite a long time to obtain all the red sandstone. There seems to be only one accessible mesa biome on this server. I had considered making this floor out of slime blocks for bouncy fun times, but even though they spawn here it would probably take me years upon years to actually gather enough slime. Let's take a quick run around the mining ring. Hmm, we'll avoid that friendly fellow by going around this way. This room is the terminus for the cart that goes to the auto smelter. It's obviously not finished yet. Still need to install the rails for the cart. I should actually kill that smeleton. Ha! None shall defeat me, you fool! Here you can see how incomplete this level is. Obviously I've been mining down here, so it's a bit messy. There's still plenty of completely safe lava around. We can go all the way around until we see that fellow again. Hey buddy! Clear evidence of plenty of mining still taking place here. I still need to finish all of this off. Let's see what's out here. Uh, nope. Not today, thank you kindly. Let's go around here and have a look at the basement. It isn't really much of a basement. It's really just where I've exposed all of the bedrock. 
I don't know if it's even navigable at all. In fact, it probably isn't, but it's here anyway. Digging all of this out got me some diamonds, so it was at least a little bit worth it. Since the house isn't particularly convenient to navigate, I have this here handy ladder for quickly reaching the surface. And we pop out through the trapdoor we looked in earlier. So that's my Minecraft house, almost complete. Once I've got the final touches on, I'll go and resume work on my Mesa castle. I did need an entire castle to harvest all of this red sandstone. Thanks for watching. Farewell.